Salabedi Forex and Cargo are proud to sponsor the Uganda Vision Program. Contact us if you want to send cargo or transfer money to loved ones in Uganda. Call us on 0208 884 4060. if you want to send cargo or transfer money to loved ones in Uganda. Call us on 0208 884 4060. Tuna sanyuko bauliza no baweleza. Hello our viewers and welcome to this week's edition of the Uganda Vision Program. My name is Solomon Kazana, your host this evening and Today we have got a lot to offer you, right from the tourism of Uganda, things about the festive season, lots of things like we always offer here at the Uganda Vision Program. But above all, to your viewers, we'd like to wish you a happy festive season, which we are in now. It's all about Christmas. I hope you enjoyed your Christmas with your families, with your friends and relatives. And we here at the Ben TV Uganda Vision Program would like to wish you a peaceful and happy entrance into the new year 2012, the year of the Olympics in London, and the year to be prosperous for everybody out there that is watching Uganda Vision. Also to thank you our viewers, did you know that right now Uganda Vision is one of the programs that is most watched on Ben Television? You can check this out on the website of Ben TV and you'll find that we are among the top 12 programs that are being watched. This is good news because we've only been here for four months and already we are in the top 12 that has been watched during this time. So thanks to you, our viewers. Without you, we wouldn't have made it. And continue to tell everyone else about Uganda Vision. Support Uganda Vision program. Uganda Vision program is about delivering, uniting, and keeping the vision in focus. So. Right now, to your viewers, our first presentation is going to be about Jesus. Because as you know, we're in the Christmas season, which is about Jesus. Now, the first presentation we're going to present to you summarizes everything about Jesus. And I would like you to enjoy. The Bible says, my king is the king of the Jews. He's a king of Israel. He's a king of righteousness. He's a king of the ages. He's a king of heaven. He's a king of glory. He's a king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I, I wonder, do you know him? <laughs> my king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He he blesses the young, he serves the unfortunate, he regards the age, he rewards the diligent, and he purifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. He's a key to knowledge. He's a well frame of wisdom. He's a doorway of the 
deliverance. He's a pathway of peace. He's a roadway of righteousness. He's a highway of holiness. He's a gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. And his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. I wish I could describe him to you. He's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. Well, you can't get him out of your mind. You see, you can't get him off of your head. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. Well, the Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. Terror couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. Yeah!
welcome back in case you have just joined us we are here at sky channel 184 with the uganda vision program next we have a presentation of an interview an interview about a well-known renowned internationally recognized ugandan model eva mbabazi now most of you who read about Eva Mbabazi, she was all over in the news a few years ago and she has done well to represent Uganda as a model and as a trainer for all the models, young models of Uganda. She even has an agency, Eva Mbabazi Models. So please enjoy this interview. Straight after this interview, we will be flowing into the comedy in Luganda. So enjoy the comedy, enjoy the happy festive season that we are having and presenting to you at, here at Uganda Vision Program. Thank you. Hello, my name is Miss Eva Mbabazi and I'm a Ugandan. I'm born in Uganda. I lived or started working as a model in Uganda, uh, but I started up as a beauty contestant in 1992 for Miss Tourism and then um, 1992 was Miss Tourism and then I went in for 1993 for Miss Uganda and then 1994 as well I did Miss Uganda and then I left for Germany that's a little bit of me basically me I'm also a mother and a model and I also own a modeling agency of my own I will talk about that later <laughs> why I own it and then uh, ah well, I'm a simple woman, not so much, <laughs> not so much to talk about. <laughs> good, good, then you know, there is plenty to talk about. Now, you have mentioned you have been to Miss Tourism, Miss yeah. Uganda. Yes. Let me ask this question. Yes. Why did you enter these competitions? Actually, one day, how I started this is I was sitting on a, in a cafe shop having some ice cream with a girlfriend and the lady walks up to me and goes, oh, hello, would you like to be in Miss Tourism? And I'm like, no, I can't because those, that, that's supposed to be for people who have, let's say, at that time, I did not think I, I do a lot, you know. They, I thought I'm not beautiful, you know. Maybe my self-esteem was low. And so... Yeah, she asked me to, to if I wanted, and I said, yeah, but I don't have a sponsor. She said she would sponsor me, so that's how I really started. Um, Many young women, they go into these beauty contests uh, hoping that they want to win because they believe they're beautiful. Mm. What does that really, you, are, you have been a beauty queen once. Yes. What has, has it helped you, or what have you achieved through being in the beauty, beauty queen, queen. Oh, even if i didn't win the title itself i have achieved a lot i have made a portfolio out of it i have made a name in my country out of it i have traveled through that beauty contest abroad out of it and it has helped me in beauty contesting i have represented my country a lot and that is wherever i go each country i go in i tell them i'm a ugandan and i always tell them that i've been in a beauty contest and it's not because we think we are beautiful no and what they're looking for is also something totally different really maybe you are the lucky one because most beauty contestants they they go into these beauty pageants but after winning a title then you don't hear about them that's bad that's sad actually this is what i really um pities me and it hurts me so much for a lady to win a certain title for a certain country let's say miss uganda and you win miss uganda the title and then we don't we don't hear anything so much about you what you're doing for your country or maybe starting up a project maybe start up a charity so that we follow you up and you know do something and that's uh, probably I am a, a hard-headed woman, and even if I did not win, at least I, I am one of those beauty contestants who contested in that time, who is still doing something good for Uganda, although I didn't win the title. But at least being first runner-up or second runner-up, I'm contented with what I won, and it has helped me uh, a lot, really, really a lot. So these young girls should really, when you win, when you win a title, really represent your country deal with the organizers, try to talk with them, or you go out there and explain yourself, listen, I miss Uganda, I would like to do this for my... And actually, you can get more help, especially when they know that you have that title in your country, people will... 
or, or is it because they don't have good agents? And secondly, the organizers, <clears throat> are they in to make for their own gains or to make their money well, as in? I, I, I think... I think most organizers are into that. I should say so. I'm not going to be afraid um, of sitting here and telling you that most organizers organize fashion shows because they want to make money out of it. They're not fashion shows, sorry, beauty contests, if you catch my tongue correct. And uh, yeah, they want to make money of it and they don't really, uh, in the end, uh, follow it up. You know, it's just about making money, making money. and. Um, at the moment, I'm training Miss Central Africa, UK, 2011, but the money is going to go to a certain cause. It's going to go for sickle cells and um, young stroke um, in, would, to help people and also in, in... Is the money going to Central Africa? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... To help with the project, and it's also going to help with with the charities here as well with the, the sickle cells. Well, because many organizations... They always behind. They always hide behind these um, charities. Uh -huh. and the, at the end of the day, really, the money doesn't go to where it's supposed to. Be. So and how I heard that. Follow that up. That look, actually, me not being the organizer, I'm just a trainer for that. So okay, I think so don't I don't know what they would do. Basically, if I was, I I in Uganda started up Face of Uganda. And Face of Uganda is basically, I'm not only looking for one girl, I'm also looking for boys and children from 13 years old to 17 and above. You could be 90 years old. So I made it a twist. It's a modeling contest. I made it a twist out of it. And because I organize it, I give money to, to the winners, a uh, million shillings to the boy and the girl, and then 750,000 Uganda shillings to the the teenagers and then it goes if you get a million if you're number one you get a million number two will get 750 number three will get 500,000 Uganda shillings I'm talking about Uganda shillings and that's it might not be much I'm looking forward to give them even a thousand pounds or three thousand pounds slowly by slowly what advice are you giving to uh, young women African women who wants to get involved in beauty contest I advise you young women who want to get into beauty contesting to one, be punctual, to keep time, be honest and love people because you, let's say for example you're going to be Miss Uganda for, for Uganda, you have to do a lot for, you know, you go out there, show yourself to the Ugandan events all the time and try to talk also with your organizers so they know exactly what you're going to do. And um, I advise them to be strong. It's not easy. You, I mean, not all of us get to win. Maybe they also have their own special uh, winners that all oh, their favorites don't go because um, they are going to be a favorite. You're going. They're going to make someone a favorite, and so you will lose. No, just go in there to to learn and get experience out of it. Even if you don't win, I mean, it's a game win or lose someone has to win that title so if you don't win it please don't hold things on the organizers and say oh they chose her because you know she's da la 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 no the judges do the job AIL TV mm. has filmed you yes actually in one of these uh, uh, um, catwalks did they it was yeah wow. it is a <laughs> tiny place thank you but you managed to manipulate the space Thank you. How do you do it? Well, it's so, as I tell you, it's about possession and passion of what you do. You have to be passionate about your work as a model and not just you as a model on stage there. It's not your day, actually your day. It is the designer's day who's trying to sell that outfit out there so when i saw that the place was small i had to improvise in my head and with my choreographer and i had to stand out from all the other girls because you need this signature walk as yourself you don't want to see me walking like naomi campbell or tyra banks no i want to do my signature because walk. You are Ivan Babazi. thank you yes <laughs> yeah it's Ivan Babazi. i have my own work and it's a very strong walk sometimes people call it i call it like giraffe walk i walk gracefully like a giraffe and um, actually, ever since I started modeling, there's no, there's no time that I come on stage and people don't scream. I don't know why or what attracts me to people. What, they're, always, they're always happy to see me. 
Tell us where you have been, just to slightly. Well, I've been to Germany. I've been to Italy to make a music video for myself. I'm also... A, <laughs> what have I not done? I was chosen to, to be in a group called Miss Wuhura. So I've been to Germany. We did our video shoot in Italy. Yes, but it's one, one of those things that I have to be honest, I had to do it playback. So maybe I'm not good at lip syncing. <laughs> So modeling, you can do many things, you know. So yeah, well, I've been to Germany and now I'm in England and I'm I'm home. This is home. Uganda, England is like a sitting room. Uganda is like a bedroom. Talk about this. Yeah, this this is on the other fashion show. My first um, fashion show in Berlin. There were 22 designers and I the the 22nd designer didn't take me on because he was just doing men's work and so all the other 21 did it for me. That was the other. And again, that's the other as well. That's uh, yep. Yvette, the designer. And you can see how these people are looking at me. Yeah, you say my walk. My walk always <laughs> makes <laughs> makes yeah. people happy. That's still Wewusiwa Wupe in Berlin House de Couture. Mm -hmm. And she made the pants. And these are rhinoceros bones from a Nigerian designer. Um, this is where we saw we pay again for Tip magazine as well. Magazine, uh, but uh, this is uh, in Germany. In Germany, in Germany, in okay. Germany, yes. And this was for Vivian Westwood in Germany too. That was also in Germany. Okay. And this was for Drink, Don't Drink and Drive uh, campaign uh, for Ford. Okay. The, the, the car. And uh, this one is for my agency in. Uh, in, in in London and this is for diesel the glasses this one was for a photographer he was going to do it in a museum so he asked me to be in a, a circle and pose see how bold I am mm -hmm. this was for Hugo Boss the uniform uh, the, the suit that was diesel the glasses this was Vivian Westwood and her Vivian colleague. Westwood the English the, the one? English one but well, she sent good. she sent somebody to to take this um, yeah. Project in yes, in Germany, this and West, uh, <laughs> word is big. <laughs> and yeah. I also, and I also did um, ID magazine. I think it's called here in England. They did. I have some photos in there for them as well. So yeah. this was basically for Vivian West. So this was for um, Rosenbaum, a certain fashion designer in Germany. And this okay. is like studio work. This is different because this was not in a studio. This was like in somebody's uh, place. And this was on the streets in Berlin. I was doing a Hugo Boss suit mm -hmm. in the middle. It's called Friedrich Strasser. And this was uh, me trying to get a photo um, to work with a photographer called El Kazila. And uh, she's a really, really good photographer. So she met at that time the blurry look was in. So that's why they look a bit blurry. And that is also for these are the glasses, the different kind of glasses. I think you can see my poses. And that is my first cover in Berlin. Uh, this is latex. It had to be painted on me. Um, I had to stand there and they paint the, the dress on me okay. by uh, M Michel Exua, it's called. And I was lucky that um, they, he chose me and he's the one that made me go to the first fashion show. So after okay. that, he made me a dress and this was the fashion show and this was for um, Sacked, the, 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 the designer label. And so it also shows you how different I can pose with different cultures as yeah. well, you know. And because I knew I was the only black girl, that's why <laughs> I made the look a little yeah. bit different to stand out. So you always, in your photography, and that was me as a model. I, <laughs> I did a music video in Italy with my colleague here. And yeah. uh, this was our name, Miss Uhura. And uh, the title of the song was Summer of Love. And that is us, and yeah, this is for my uh, collection as well. And this is for um, Yokodama. Okay, and they so went. That lot. is, um, yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can see you. You have done a lot, and, uh, and that's nothing actually. There's yeah. many more. <laughs> <laughs> what is Ivan Babazi planning to do for the next three years? I'm planning. I'm developing now a social network. Uh, Eva Modos. Inform. I'm, I'm. I'm thinking about two names right now, planning to do that, and I'm. I'm working hard more on the agency to get clients in, for my models as well. Although the big client base is in Uganda, so I need to probably go in Uganda and 
get some people to start up uh, other projects as well. And I don't, I'm a mother and also I need to do my day job as a mother, look after my children and take them to school, make sure they come back home. And as a mother, I, it's a busy life. It's, it's busy being a model, a mother and a, a modeling agency owner and a trainer and a choreographer. Well, so you've done it. Almost everything. <laughs> Almost and everything. Yeah. I've also acted in Uganda. I'm an actress as well. Oh, I'm well, with the Ebonies. Okay. <laughs> Hello, the Ebonies. So maybe what really makes you stand out because of your attitude? You are. You are I'm passionate lab, about yeah. what I do. I am straightforward with, uh, and I also learn to learn to learn. I like to listen. Patience. I say patience pays. And it always pays to be patient. And even if people come up with bad moods and have had a bad day, I, I don't let it uh, bother me. I, when I go back home, then I cry about it, but not in front of the people. Yeah. <laughs>